we are starting the week, um, I mean, we are starting the session number four of this second week. Uh, if you can hear something, it's because it's raining so hard right now and it's kind of noisy, but we are going to expect or we are, uh, we are like hoping um, this rain is not going to stop the session in the middle or something like that. So we are going to start um, the session because we are going to talk about the techniques that we use to learn English. And uh, we were seeing different videos in which we were like uh, listening people talking about the techniques that they use to learn a new, um, in this case, a new um, language or um, something something new like in the case of the intro video of the section number three that in that case they were talking about the uh, dance uh, a style of dancing so in that case they were talking about techniques that they can apply to that um, to that activity and in our cases because we are learning english we need to apply techniques that help us um to uh, to talk about techniques that we can use uh, in our process of learning English. In that case, um, in the document that we have for the information that we are like using in these sessions, we have this one that is the question in that case. So, there we have the document in which we have our um, information and we were like having a question. And that one um, is related to the video that we were uh, seeing yesterday about the techniques that people use uh, to talk um, to learn English. So um, the question is that what are the techniques that you listened on the conversation? But that question we're going to like um, answer when all of the participants uh, come into the session because you know that we need uh, your opinions also because we are going to talk about the techniques that all of you use to learn English. So I was saying that right now it's raining kind of hard uh, here. So I hope that the connection um, is not going to fail in this session because it is the last of this uh, second week. And we are going to try to, to complete the session uh, today because um, we are like in a in a good way right now. We are ending the week number two, and we are in the middle of the course. So we are going to have just two more weeks to complete this this course or this module. Remember that you have to complete your activities on the platform uh, this day because you know that the last day of the week you need to complete the information or the exercises uh, that you have there. If we are going to talk about the techniques that we use when we are learning English, but also we're going to talk about, um, like in this case, we are going to make a review of the gerund because we need to talk about a little bit about the gerunds. And if we have time, we are going to, um, complete the midterm test. So in that case, I'm going to read the exercises and I'm going to um, help you with the answers. Uh, but in that case, we are going to do it if we have time at the end of the session. Uh, if we not 
or if we don't have that time, you know that you need to complete that part um, because they are evaluating you or evaluating the progress that you have on the platform. So remember that you have to complete section number three for today. If you have time to do it, you can uh, do it after the session. So uh, in that case, I'm going to talk about the, um, the techniques or the, um, how can we say that? Because in that case, I'm not going to give you like a exact techniques or things that we need to do when we are learning English. In that case, I'm going to give you like um, seven ways in that case, if I can uh, tell like that. I'm going to talk about like, let me go to the information, give me a moment. So I'm going to talk about the seven simple ways uh, to learn English. So we are going to have seven different, the midterm. Ah, that is like an exam that is evaluating your progress because uh, you know that you have completed uh, three sections. And in that case, you have that exam that uh, talk about the different uh, topics that you have seen during these three uh, sections. It's like a short exam. It's kind of short, but it is evaluating all the information that you have at this moment. You have two midterm, I guess. You have one after the section number three, and you have another one at the end. It's like an exam. Uh, that is evaluating your, your knowledge. So in that case, uh, you're welcome. So we're going to do that part um, at the end. I will make time to see the exercises that we have there. So I will, I will uh, do that. So uh, in this case, we are going to wait for the others. And I think when we have like 10 or 12 um, participants, we're going to do this part of the techniques that we use to learn English. But while we are waiting for the others, I'm going to um, talk about the seven the seven uh, simple ways to learn English effectively. In this case, remember that uh, you have different ways uh, to do your um, learning process. And that is uh, something in which we cannot say that uh, some things are correct or some things are not. In that case is related to the, uh, the way we feel the way we learn and the things that we find uh, better for our understanding. In the video, we were like uh, listening about uh, people writing vocabulary on uh, sticky uh, notes. Um, also, we were like listening people that is like, uh, what, listening, conversation, listening music, and all of that things. And in that case, um, it's something very uh, different for each uh, people in, in this process. Maybe I use different techniques that, uh, that the ones that you are using, um, because in that moment when, we, when I was learning English, um, we didn't have like all of the information or all the free access to the information because it was kind of complicated to um, search that kind of information on internet because in that moment, and I am not talking about like 20 years ago, I am talking about like a, what? 10 years ago, um, we were like, having kind of troubles because uh, 
we don't know exactly where to find information and we did different things to learn English because in that time we don't have this kind of classes uh, online you using your devices and you're using your computer or your cell phone to learn English. In that moment, we don't have that kind of things. Um, but now you have like a more information, you have access to different materials um, you have more like exercises. Uh, you can search books, you can search like audios uh, in which you can practice uh, with other people around the world. And in that moment, uh, we didn't have like that freedom to do all of that things. But the things that we did in that moment uh, help us to gain vocabulary and to practice our English skills. And now we cannot say like, we are like the best speakers uh, of the English language because it is not. Uh, we are doing the things that we learn, but we are uh, learning all of the time and I am practicing all of the time and I am um, gaining more information about English language. And also I am gaining like a confidence on speaking in English because you know that one of the most like um, difficult things for us is to speak, to produce, because sometimes we feel like uh, we, when we are talking in a second language, because we are like, uh, thinking about that, we make mistakes when we speak. Uh, people maybe is not uh, understanding what I am saying uh, because I have a different pronunciation or um, when I am like making the articulation of the words is kind of uh, weird and not clear. But you know that that kind of things make language unique because um, all of us have a different uh, way to talk in English. We have different ways to express uh, the sounds because that is a, a part of sounds. Uh, if you know, sometimes I feel like kind of uh, weird when I am talking in English and even when I am speaking in Spanish because I have like um, a specific way to pronounce words. And it's like very, uh, I don't know how to express it, but I feel it like I am not like pronouncing it well the, the words. And it is not just in English, it is also in Spanish that I have that, that situation in which I am feeling like that is not the correct pronunciation or I am not like uh, making the correct sound when I am producing or when I am talking. But, uh, that is part of us. It is not something that we are going to change uh, in a couple of days, in a couple of months. Maybe it's a hard work um, in which we need to do a lot of things, a lot of practice and all of that things to be more confident uh, when we produce the language. But when we are doing the process, we are gaining information and now you have like, a lot of material that you can use to uh, improve your knowledge of the English language. So in that case, I'm going to write here. The seven simple ways to learn English. In this case, you can take these seven simple ways or you can like say, no, that is not effective for me. In this case, you can make like a comparison of the things that I am going to tell you with the things that you do to learn English. So let's see. So, in this case, it says that learning English as a second language can be a challenging task, but once you get the hang of it, every effort and time you spend studying the language 
um, will be worth it. By being fluent in English, traveling will be more fun. Also, you don't have to wait for the latest best-selling book or Hollywood movie to be translated in your native language to enjoy them. To help you with this end the board, and we are going to talk about the seven ways to learn English. In this case, imagine that uh, we are like learning English because we need to, to gain that knowledge, but also that a uh, that a skill is going to like give you a lot of different things. In the case that you like to read, uh, you are not going to wait for the Spanish version of your favorite book, for example. You are going to read the original book in English and you are going to feel a uh, good reading that a uh, book in English because you are going to understand all the things that uh, are happening there. Also, uh, you are going to watch your favorite movie and you don't need the translation of the of the words because you are going to listen to the conversation and you are going to enjoy that movie. So in that case, we can say that learning a different language, and in this case, we are focusing on English, but you can uh, keep learning another language as uh, we are going to have a lot of opportunities to do new things, new interesting things, and we are going to like expand our knowledge and our uh, practices, and we are going to have like different things that we can do. In this case, if you like to travel around the world, you can go there and you have like a, the way to communicate with other people because you know that a, in this moment, um, we have the power to communicate with other people around the world because many people is learning English too. So in that case, it's going to be like an advantage to learn English, to go to different places in which they are not like speaking in Spanish because you know how to communicate with others in English. And you need to put in, to practice all the things that you are learning about the, the English language. and. That is going to be very good when you go there and you understand what people is saying to you and you're not going to be very lost when you go to another place. But the thing is that in different places, people use like um, like different pronunciation of some words or there are more words that we are not like uh, familiar with, but we are going to, to find a way to, to understand what the people is saying to us. So, one of the seven simple ways is a study phrases, not words. And what, what is this about? It says when you study English or any language for that matter, you shouldn't learn individual in individual words because memorizing them makes no sense without context. Instead, you should study whole phrases. Memorizing the meaning of words is much easier if you know what they mean and how they are used in a sentence. When we are learning English, we are like memorizing every single word in a separate way. And in some cases, we cannot connect that information into a sentence, into an useful sentence, um, because in that case, uh, we are like making a mental map of the words that we are learning, and we are like having troubles to understand what is the, the context of the sentence. But when we are like um, learning or memorizing phrases, uh, knowing what they mean in a context, in a real conversation, it's going to be better for us to understand and to create conversation with other uh, people. So in that case, you need to 
study phrases, not just words. Then we have number two, learn by listening. This one said, while reading textbooks can help you learn the English language, you mustn't really solely on them. Textbooks are great for teaching you about grammar and vocabulary, but they may not be too much of a help when it comes to carrying out a conversation. If you want to learn how to speak English, learn by listening and not by reading. By listening more, you will be able to learn, use, um, to learn useful vocabulary and grammar without even realizing or memorizing them. Maybe we feel more like uh, comfortable when we are reading because we say, ah, I'm going to memorize that information. I'm going to mark what they are saying. Um, I am going to mark the concept of some words or something like that. But the thing is that we are reading and we are using our voice to read the information and we are like uh, using our own pronunciation of the words when we are reading the information. But if you are listening, uh, you are making your brain to process that information and you are listening, 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 and you are going to learn from that activity. And in that case, it's like, we are not going to feel like we are like a, a learning something because in some cases we are going to say, oh, I'm just listening. But if you keep doing that situation, you are keep, a, keep a practicing that skill, you are going to gain a lot of information. You are going to practice in your brain and you are going to process that information and you are going to pay attention to the words that the other people is saying. So for that reason is like, um, we have this, uh, this, this way to learn English because you're going to gain a lot of things when you are listening conversation in English, when you are listening music in English, because I know that some of you enjoy listening music and it's going to give you like a very good moment in which you are going to um, keep your mind open to the music and to the words that they are using. And also when you watch a TV or watch a movie, you are listening to the conversation. And in that moment you are uh, like uh, saving some phrases, some words, some expression from the uh, movies you are watching. And then you say, ah, I remember that phrase, but I don't know in which movie I have heard that information, but I remember that, or I have heard that word before. And in that case, you are going to gain more information. And also you are going to practice the grammar part without knowing. And in that case, it's very, very easy for us to learn in that way. Then number three, Get a placement test. This one says that finding out your current English proficiency level is crucial before you embark on an, any learning plan as it will, uh, it will determine the type of program you should follow. Uh, for example, a comprehensive English program, if your level is around intermediate level, or lower in a customized learning plan for upper intermediate level and above. In that case, when we are like having the idea of learning English, we need to make this placement test because in that case, you're going to know what is your level and what is the information that you have in which areas you have like problems or you are not like, um, understanding all the information that you have about that area or a specific area. And in that case, you can like uh, follow the specific uh, courses for your level. Because imagine that you are right now in advance, but in 
for some reasons, you are not going to continue with the advanced English and you go to another course and, and they say, ah, you need to be on a, a basic, very basic um, course. You are not going to feel very good because you know that you have, a, now you have more uh, knowledge um, than you have before. So in that case, you need to make placement tests. And it is not just to search for a, a better course or something like that. If you make the placement test, you are going to see in which areas you need to pay attention and you need to practice more. Maybe if you have problems in listening, you need to focus on that because you need to learn how to understand the words that people is saying um, you need to like make a better process of the words when you are listening or you have problems in grammar, you need to search for um, exercises that have to be with grammar to understand what is um, or why it is important to know about grammar or maybe you have problems in pronunciation. So you need to search um, exercises and you, and you have to pronounce the words and you have to practice uh, having conversations. Um, so in that case, that is very important to get a placement test, to know what is your level, what is your, um, the things in which you have problems, in which you have troubles, and know what are your uh, strong areas because you have a strong areas too. Number four, I mean, number four. Prioritize quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. This one said, when it comes to learning and in which it is about quality over quantity, instead of learning dozens of new words in a short time, you should focus on learning one word and repeating it dozens of times. This prevents you from suffering from information overload um, in addition, this strategy allows you to uh, place the meaning of words and phrases deeper in your brain. As a result, you won't forget them easily. So in that case, when we are learning English, we tend to do this. Um, when we are learning, we say, ah, I need a lot of information. I need a lot of uh, vocabulary uh, and I need to learn a lot of things. But that make us like, it is not something good because we are going to have a lot of information and at the end, we are not going to find the specific words that we need to uh, use when we are in a conversation. When I was like learning English for the first time, I was like, like this. I tend to learn a lot of things at the same time, but when I needed to speak in public or I needed to speak with other uh, uh, people in English, I feel very um, afraid because I know that I have that, that a lack of information because I try it to gain a lot of vocabulary, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't know how to complete a phrase in English because I uh, have a lot of words, but uh, at the same time, I didn't know how to uh, create a, a whole sentence because I, I, I didn't practice that part. So in this case, we need to have quality of information over quantity. If you are doing something like this, like learning a lot of vocabulary, you need to stop. You need to uh, like choose one of the words and you need to practice, 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 practice that word. And when you are sure you are learning that um, 
that phrase, that word, that expression, you are going to move it on. It can be like, or we can feel like it, that is kind of a slow, but you are going to have a lot of information in your brain and you are going to use them uh, to talk in English with other people. Number five. Learn grammar with point of view stories. Learn grammar with point of view stories. This one said that one of the best ways to learn grammar is to listen to short stories told in various tenses. This will help you improve your English grammar automatically and more naturally. For example, if a story starts with, I don't like banana, but I want to eat one, the other story should be, I didn't like bananas, but I wanted to eat one. When we are listening short stories or when we are listening uh, stories in English, uh, we can find that they are using different tenses like a uh, present, then they use past, then they use future and all other things. Uh, that will help you with grammar because we are going to remember all the um, structure that we have in English. You know that we have like, three different tenses, a pre, a past, present, and future, but each tense has four more tenses that we can use in those uh, in moments of life. So in this case, listening a uh, short stories will help you with grammar and also will help you with pronunciation, will help you with vocabulary, will help you uh, improving the skill and a lot of things. So you need to focus also on listening because in some cases um, we focus on speaking or we focus on writing or we focus on reading, but in some cases we uh, don't work in listening. So we need to work in the four macro skills that we need to learn English. That is reading, listening, writing, and speaking. The four of them are a group of skills that we need to develop when we are learning English. Number six, listen and answer, not listen and repeat. Listen and answer. Not listen and repeat. This says, I need a coma. Mm. So it says that if you want to improve your English, don't use the strategy used by English textbooks, which is to repeat after the speaker. Instead of mindlessly parroting the words or phrases spoken by the speaker, you should answer question asked. For example, if you are listening to a podcast or video, pause it every 20 or 30 seconds and create a summary of what has been said. The thing with learning English and the things that I was saying when I was learning English is that in that time, in 15, 10, or 20 years ago, um, the process of learning English is like, listen and repeat, listen and repeat, listen and repeat. And in some cases, nowadays, we have that same technique, listen and repeat. But the thing is, we are not doing anything, just listening and repeating. We need to listen in, we need to understand, we need to make a connection of the information that we are listening. And then we are going to make like this one, a summaries of the things that a speaker is saying. So we need to change the listening and repeat for listening and answer. 
listening and focusing in a specific information. So we are going to stop doing these kind of activities because they are not like very, very um, effective in this case, because we need more. We are not going to do it like in the school. We are going to do it in a different way because we need to, to learn more. And the last one is the one that you are doing right now, is take an online lesson. This uh, said that there are many online courses available on the internet. A quick search in Google will show you a list of training providers. This is another thing that I was saying that uh, nowadays we have a lot of online courses and um, you have the opportunity to find uh, free courses on internet, on YouTube, and all of the platforms that we have uh, on internet. And that make the process of learning very um, or easier than before. Because in that time we need, or we needed uh, books, we needed that kind of exercises of uh, listen and, and, and repeat. But now you have a lot of courses on internet that you can uh, use to learn and to um, gain more information and also to improve the information that you have. For example, ending in these, these modules, uh, all of the modules that you have with uh, these kind of courses, you can search another ones uh, with native speakers, for example, because you are going to make an analysis of the information that you have and then you are going to gain more information from other people. And also you are going to practice a different pronunciations. For example, you can search people from United States, you can search people from UK that they use a different kind of pronunciation and they have like very specific vocabulary also. You can search people from Australia, people from Asia or something like that because you are going to make like a comparison of the information that you have with the information they have and practice different pronunciation and you are going to find your own uh, way to express your ideas and the way you are going to speak. So that uh, are all the ways that we have to learn English. In this case, there are like seven simple ways. We know that we have a lot of ways to learn English, but in this case, we're just going to focus on seven. Um, and I was saying, if you feel like it's going to help you with uh, your process, you can take it. If you feel that they are not like related to the process that you are having, you are not going to use them, but that is just your decision. So we are going to talk about the techniques that you use. I was saying that when we have like more than 10 participants, we're going to do this one. So I need you to express what are the techniques that you use when you are learning English. So um, I need you to write one technique that you practice to learn English. I need you to write that technique on the chat and we're going to read it and we're going to see if we have the same uh, techniques or we um, have different techniques that we can use to learn English. So I'm going to give you four minutes, four minutes to write the techniques that you use to learn English. Right now we have four minutes to write that information.
uh, writing the techniques that you use to learn English. So you can write what is the technique that you use um, or that you are using right now to improve your English skills. Okay, we are going to begin reading some of the techniques that you're writing. And I, I saw uh, something very interesting. So this one said to watch comedy series. That is very good because you are like having a really good time watching something that you like and also you are learning something new. Then it says to learn English, I used to listen in speeches, audiobooks, with subtitles. Also, I like to do grammar tests. That is something very good because uh, when you are listening a speech uh, from different topics, you are not just learning English. You are just, um, I mean, you are also uh, learning information about uh, different topics and they are very, very interesting. And also you need uh, to learn how to like uh, talk and you can see the example of people talking, so you can apply those uh, examples. Audiobooks, they are very, um, very important for your uh, learning process. Uh, and grammar tests also, because you are uh, practicing the grammar part, not just the listening part. Listening English music, very good, because I was saying that you're going to enjoy the music and also you're going to uh, learn something from that, uh, activity um, practice with another people that is very very important because you are like listening reading and writing but also you need to produce all the things that you are learning and in that case practicing with other people will help you uh, with the pronunciation of the words and also to feel uh, confident of the way you are uh, speaking Watch movies in English with subtitles in order to know the meaning and also the pronunciation. Um, this is something that many people recommend when you are uh, in this process of learning English that at the beginning, you need to watch movies um, with English audio and Spanish subtitles. When you have like a higher level, you need to watch the movies with English subtitle because you are going to practice the listening and also the reading because in some cases we hear something different. When, when we are reading the subtitle, we know what is the word that they are using. So in that case, we need to improve the level of the uh, practice. Play video games in English. When I, I read this, when you write about the play video games, I remember uh, something. Uh, I, am a, I am a teacher and I am working in a private school. And when I uh, started uh, working in that place in 2019, uh, I have a student in first grade. In that moment, I was like uh, giving them English classes because I was the English teacher in that moment. Right now, I am not the English teacher there, but that is the point. The point is that this uh, little kid is speaking English, a perfect English, and he 
was in first grade. And when he was speaking English, um, I was like, how this kid speak that kind of English? And I was like, where did you learn English? And he said, oh, I play video games in English. And I learned all of the words from the video games. And I was like, what? What are you saying? I am like having a life learning English and you are learning from uh, playing video games. And he said like, yes, and I play video games and also watch videos about those video games in English. And at this moment, he is like in fourth grade and he still speak perfect English. And I was saying like perfect English because he have like the accent of someone that is native. But the thing is that playing video games can help you also gain uh, that level of English. Uh, and it is not like something uh, out of this world because you can do it in that way. I watch animated series, uh, series or movies in English language with English subtitle too. That's very good. Uh, I have an application. This one is very interesting. I have an application on my cell phone called WordBit. It's very useful because it shows you a new word or a new phrase when you unlock your cell phone. It is divided by levels. It shows you a brand depending on your level. That is very interesting because you are seeing one word per day and you are not like uh, having a lot of information. In this case, we are going to use like the quality, not quantity. And that is kind of interesting. I read text in English or following pages in different, in different, uh, Different content, I guess. I remember when I was uh, at the beginning, when I was learning English, uh, the teacher said, if you want to, to learn more English, you need to change the language of your devices. That was the first step to learn English, changing the language of the devices. Uh, we change the language of our cell phones and also the, the language of our computer because we need to like uh, feel familiar with all of the words that we have there. And we have like a lot of time or we spend a lot of time on our cell phones and making that a, an English place, we are going to feel like very familiar with the language. So in that case, it is important also to change the language of our devices. Listening music and watch movies in English. Watch short videos on my social networks. Very good. Learn English doing what we like the most. Of course, if you like to listen to music, keep doing that because in that case, you're going to learn um, English. You're going to practice English. If you like to read, you need to change the Spanish books for English books. Because in that case, you are going to make your brain to stop thinking just in Spanish. Because that is another thing that we need to change. Um, try to think in English also when we are listening something, because in that moment we are like changing, changing the, the words from English into Spanish. And in that case, you need to make your brain think in English also, because it's going to be better for you if you try to um, create the sentences in English, not in Spanish and then translate it into English. In that case, you need to uh, switch that language in your brain too. Uh, if you like to write stories, you need to begin writing stories in English. And if you like to play video games, you need to play video games in English. And all of the things that you like to do because you're going to enjoy it. So that is a very, very good advice. And thank you, Emmanuel, for, for that advice because it's very, very important also. 
it is not just to uh, have the friend uh, application and all the things. It's just enjoy also the process. Because if we are not enjoying the process, we're not going to do anything with uh, the English language. So those are the techniques that you are using and you know that we can change um, the way in which we are learning English. So let's see, I was saying that we need to Uh, see what is the meter about and we are going to do it right now because we have a couple of um, minutes and we are going to see what are the exercises that we have there but give me go to the platform right now because I need to show you what is the meter about Because you know, for the ones that uh, were not at the beginning of the session, I was saying that you need to complete the section number three for today, because today is the last session of this week. So after the section number three, we have the mid term that is a kind of exam. And it come, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five parts in that a uh, meter. Let's see. This is the meter section and check the answers. Here, to read the options that you have, and then you are going to find the answer in a very quick way. So, Clara tells Augusto, and we have the options. The waiter's shirt is ugly, the table has scratches on it, her glass is chipped. Number two, one of Tina's complaints to her landlord is that the refrigerator leaks, the ceiling needs to be stained. The living room was painted before she moved in. So we're going to listen the first one and we're going to answer the number one and number two. But let me see if I can play this one. I don't think this is the right restaurant, Augusto. It doesn't look very good. I'm sure this is the one. I know it doesn't look great, but the menu looks interesting. But look. That waiter's wearing a horrible shirt. Clara, maybe he likes bright colors. I don't mean the colors. There's a huge tear in it, and it doesn't look clean. Yeah, actually, I see what you mean. And look at this tablecloth. It's badly stained. It looks like someone spilled coffee all over it. And my glass is chipped. I could cut myself. Let's get out of here. Four. Hello? Hello, Mr. Jones. This is Tina, the new tenant in 2C. Um, the refrigerator makes a loud noise, and it keeps leaking all over the floor. And another thing, the whole apartment needs to be repainted. I don't understand. You didn't point out any of this when you looked at the apartment last week. Well, I didn't notice the refrigerator then because I hadn't turned it on. But I thought you said you would paint the entire apartment before I moved in. Yes, okay. I'll come over right now. Okay, that is the first part. Clara tells us Augusto what? Her glass is cheaper. Mm, her glass is cheap. Mm, mm, mm. Another answer? No. The waiter series longer. Good. She said that the waiter shirt is horrible. And who said that the glass is cheap was Augusto. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the first one we have 
the waiter shirt is ugly. Then, number two, one of Tina's complaints uh, to her landlord is that the refrigerator leaks. Good, the refrigerator leaks. Very good. Then we have uh, listening number two. So we're going to listen. What is this? But first, we need to see what are the options. To stop depleting the awesome liar, Bob recommends cutting down trees, buying hairspray, reducing pollution. Sonia is upset because the environment is protected. She goes to work easily. People say she is selfish. Then Lynn is most interested in how pollution causes health problems, diet affects health, fish farmers pollute. And number four, Sally is going to take a course in astronomy, outer bear, exercise science. So let's listen the information. One, are you going to buy that can of hairspray? Uh, yeah, Bob, I am. Why? Because those spray cans contain CFCs, which deplete the ozone layer. What does that mean? Well, many scientists think global warming is caused by the destruction of the ozone layer, and that the increase in skin cancer is due to the reduction in ozone. Spray cans cause all that? You must be joking. No, I'm serious. Not using spray cans is just one thing you can do. Another way to preserve the ozone layer is to plant trees. But the best way is to cut down on air pollution by reducing the number of cars. Well, why don't you spend your energy encouraging people to use public transportation instead? Don't worry. I'm working on that, too. Two. You know... I get so tired of being told not to use my car. I just saw a TV show about global warming, and this man said that people who have cars are selfish. Well, many problems have been caused by pollution from heavy traffic. Yes, but what am I supposed to do? There's only one bus a day to the city where I work, and it leaves at noon. I have to be at work early in the morning. I know how you feel, Sonia. But one thing to do about it is to live closer to where you work. What? Live in all that pollution? No thanks. Three. I hate my job. I think I need to go back to school. Good for you, Lynn. What do you want to study? Well, I can't decide between environmental science and nutritional science. Well, would you prefer to work on the environment? or specialize in diet and health when you graduate. I'm worried about how environmental problems affect people's health. For example, chemicals are being pumped into the river near where I live. I'm sure the fish farms are being contaminated by chemicals. Sounds like environmental science is for you. Four. Tom, did you see what's being offered this summer? I'm thinking about registering for a class. Yeah, I've already registered. I'm taking astronomy. Hey, why don't you join me, Sally? It'll be fun. Well, I'd prefer to take something more useful. I was considering either auto repair or exercise science. You know, a better way to learn about auto repair is by studying car repair manuals. You can check them out of the library instead of spending money on a class. Yeah, I could try that first. So then I think I'll register for the exercise science class. I've always wanted to learn about fitness. Okay, so we're just going to answer those uh, uh, parts and we're going to end the session. So for number one, to stop depleting the ozone layer, Bob recommends. Reducing the pollution. And in this case, if you can see, you have the answers um, first, and then you listen and say, ah, I, I was right with the answer because that's kind of easy. Number two, Sonia is upset because. Why is she upset? 
he goes to work early. He goes to work early. Mm. No. What were people saying about the ones that have a car? They were. In this case, they were talking about that the people say she is selfish. So in that case, she is angry for that reason. Then Lynn is most interested in how? Pollution causes health problems. Good. Pollution causes health problems. And the last one, Sally is going to take a course in. Exercise. Exercise. Good. Exercise science. So, science. Yes. Those are the answers. The waiter shirt is ugly. The refrigerator leaks. Reducing pollution. People say she is selfish. Pollution causes health problems and exercise science. And then you have three more, I, I think three or four. You have four more uh, parts of the exam, so you need to complete it for today. So we're going to end the session here. Have a really good night. Have a really good weekend. And we are going to see each other on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Happy weekend, everybody.